Hey guys, Game or 6 here, back with another video. In this video, I turn one of my Nana Shimura sketches into a full-on drawing, more specifically, a full-on comic page. In this video, I'll discuss how well Twin Impact would pair with One for All, and my ranking of the female members of Class 1A in terms of combat skills. For those of you who either have not seen Season 5 or don't remember from Season 5, Niren Kiki Shoda is the user of the quirk called Twin Impact. He's a member of Class 1B, and in the beginning of Season 5, Class 1A had a combat dream of Class 1B in which they split up into teams of four and fought against each other in a mock city in which they are the heroes and for them, the other team are the villains. Niren Kiki Shoda's quirk is called Twin Impact, as I said, and basically what it allows a user to do is hit something and then set off a remote impact later and that impact is many times stronger than the uh, initial attack so let's let me just picture a situation for you guys Deku is fighting against Stain when he initially rushes Stain he's able to get a good hidden at this point Deku is using 5% one for all so let's say he hits Stain and then he continues to go out Stain, and the moment that Stain, either one, he paralyzes him via his blood curdle, or Stain tries to attack, Deku sets off Twin Impact, and boom, Stain is knocked back again. Stain is confused, Deku is probably able to do this a second time in this, in this hypothetical scenario, and then Stain is like, what the hell am I supposed to do? So... The only thing Stain can really do is charge at Deku, but not allow Deku to hit him back. And the thing is, both Stain and Deku are close range fighters. Because of Stain's quirk, he, is, he has to get in close so he can then just one's blood and paralyze them. Luckily for Shoto, during the entire fight, he was never paralyzed, but Ida and Midoriya were. I believe Midoriya was paralyzed twice in the encounter. Shoto was the last one to show up, but regardless, he was victorious in that sense. I think that has to do with the fact that Midoriya, Ida, and Native kind of helped to explain his powers, so Shoto knew at the beginning not to let him ingest his blood. So, this is a thought of that. I was trying to think of other people's quirks to pair with One for All, but I couldn't think of anything better than Twin Impact. Um, there are definitely people who would do well with One for All, like Aizawa, for example, erasing one's quirk and then just pounding on them with One for All. That would be great. With Twin Impact, though, you can even set traps. Like I just said, Deku initially hits Stain, or what he can do is he can hit a bunch of random objects and then he uses twin impact to cause a second impact on those objects those objects either fall or move in whatever way and Deku can completely trap somebody with it and given how smart he is I'm absolutely sure Deku can pull something like that off or something even way more complex than what I'm thinking so with twin impact alone one for all would just have so much more versatility it would it would be on the level of what Deku's doing now with Fajin, Black Whip, Flow. Like, I'm, he, he can pull off a lot of stuff with just Twin Impact combined with One for All. Since I feel I don't do enough, let's go over the female members of Class 1A. Class 1A has a total of 6 females and 14 males. So, Class 1A is made up of... What's the percentage? 6... 6 over 20 can be reduced to th so 30%. Class 1A is 30% female. So I decided, in terms of just combat abilities, because in terms of hero work, Endeavor says that there's three major categories. Rescue, combat, evacuations. We're just going to focus on combat for this. So I want to rank the six female members of Class 1A. In terms of the combat abilities, I'm going to go from the top and then go down to the bottom. So the first is going to be Momoyari Rozu. She was one of the students who got in from recommendation. The other students uh, within the same year will be Shuzo Hononuki, who went up against Todoroki in the Class 1A versus Class 1B skirmish. Shoto Todoroki 
and then Setsuna Tokage who got her cheeks clapped by Bakugo because she didn't know that Bakugo can work with others. So the reason I have her number one is just her versatility with creation. She can literally create anything as long as, well, she can't create anything that's living. So she can create anything as long as she knows the chemical compounds that make up it. And given that she has to know that in order to create stuff, she's probably study up on just what things are made out of. So she has just a lot of general knowledge, way more general knowledge than any of the females in class 1A, and even the majority of the males. I think the only one who can match her in terms of general intellect would be Todoroki, if we're being honest. But even Todoroki admitted in the final exam in season 2 that she's better at strategizing. So if you take Todoroki's word for it, she should be the best strategist of class 1A, uh, if we're being honest. So it's obvious why she got in from recommendation. She's always on top of everything. Her initial weakness is that on the spot she wasn't able to think uh, to strategize and she wasn't able to adapt to the situation which is why she lost to Tokiyami in the sports festival. And from there she lost her confidence but that has changed from season 2 to season 3 and even toward season 5. So, second of the females would be Ochako Uraraka. First of all, she has the best movement skills. I think the only one who can match her in general movement would be Froppy with Frog, who we'll talk about next because I have her third. But yeah, out of everyone, she definitely has the most experience with close range combat, or she, I'd say she's the best when it comes to close range combat out of the students, but the reason I have Yairozu above her is because she can adapt to any situation. Her versatility with her quirk, her general knowledge, her ability to break things down is just on a completely different level in comparison to the other female members. Um, and in Season 5, Ruraka got wires into her hero outfit, so now she c she has a lot more maneuverability and more control because you can use those wires to restrain people or to swing around, which we haven't seen. Kind of like how Deku uses a black whip to swing around like Spider-Man, but Uraraka doesn't do that currently. Ashido might be able to match Uraraka's movement skills on the ground specifically, but she can't get airborne with her acid. And if Uraraka touches someone, they're basically done because she has full control in that combat situation and she can either drop you or she can just keep you up in the air not really being able to do anything because most people don't have the ability to just move around i mean deku can use air force for example but yeah not that many people have the ability to do that so next we have suyu asui aka froppy which is her hero name as i said before she can rival uraraka in terms of general movement she, she can hop around like a frog she has her tongue that she can use to either restrain people or move around i don't think she's actually used her tongue for that she can spit out her stomach and she can also store things in her stomach she stored the cuffs uh in her in Tokoyami's match against Ectoplasm in the final exam, and then she pulled it out. So, other things she has are camouflage, and she can also... What she did in Season 5 in the match against Shishida's team is she used her uh, acid to disguise Kaminari in Shinso's scent, so Shishida couldn't recognize which one was the actual Froppy. So he had to go based off of their actual movements. So fourth is Kyoka Jiro. She can disrupt anyone's movements with sound. Momo's the only one out of the females I can see actually countering her sound-based attacks. And since no one else can either block the sound or can move faster than sound itself, they can't really do much to help her. Maybe Uraraka can move ahead of time and just float up in the air. Maybe Ashiro could use her acid to completely uh, just stop her from using any of her gear to shoot sound. Uh, but with that, let's go to the last two. I'm going to go with Mina Ashijo. Again, her movement skills are definitely better than Jiro's, but her acid is very easy to avoid. She can protect herself with Acid Man, which she learned from Kirishima's Unbreakable. 
She can use her acid to enhance her movement skills. She has decent close and long range attacks, making her more able to adapt to things. And last, we're gonna go with Invisible Girl or Toro Valkyrie. You know, the one girl who's invisible, and the only way you can see her on screen is if she's wearing clothes and if she's naked, you can't see her because she's invisible. So, basically, her thing is she's just invisible, like I've stated. She has learned to bend light like Aoyama's navel laser and refract light to blind people. Other than that, she's just invisible. If she's wearing any clothes, that cancels out her invisibility and makes it completely worthless. Otherwise, it's simply a matter of time before someone counters her. She doesn't have the skills to take someone out before they can do something to stop her because her physical abilities aren't enhanced whatsoever. She doesn't have any special moves that can immobilize somebody. So, yeah, that's why I have her last. She's just invisible. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, check out my Twitter and Discord, both are in the description. If you want to know what I'm currently doing or thinking about, those two places are the best places to go. I will see you guys next time.